Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today we are back at the Edgeman Championships with the finals, the last battle that was fought at this tournament. And it is between two counter burn decks. We've got Hank, also known as HWMTG, a famous Dutch old school player. He is playing counter burn and his opponent, Clovis, the Frenchman from The Hague, is also playing counter burn. So we've got counter burn versus counter burn, a mirror match in the finals. But the decks have some differences and those differences we're going to take a look at in the deck tech section of this video. Before we jump into that though, I would first like to mention that as always, you can also choose to check out the games first, go to the deck tech section later. The easiest way to do this is by checking out the description below. There you will find several timestamps. One of the timestamps reads MTG games, click on there. It'll take you straight to the action. And in that same description below, you can also find more information about my Patreon page, patreon.com slash TimmyTalks. So if you would like to support the channel and help me continue making these videos for you, please consider becoming a patron of the show. Check out patreon.com slash TimmyTalks. Okay, and now that you're fully informed, I'm gonna start with the deck decks. And uh, let's take a look. Let's check out Hank's counter burn deck first. Let's do that first. Let's have a look. Okay, and as you can see here, you can see two decks instead of just one, because I thought, why not uh, compare both decks together? Because they're both playing Counter Burn. So on the left side, you see the deck of Hank. That's the deck with the Iron Claw Orcs. On the right side, you see the deck of Clovis. That's the deck with the Flying Man, right? That's the easiest way to keep these two apart. They have exactly the same strategy. That is Counter Burn, meaning you want to play cheap creatures. You want to attack with them as quickly as you can. You want to turn them sideways, deal damage. Finished the job with a lot of cheap and efficient burn, like Psionic Blast, Chain Lightning, Lightning Bolt. And if we're looking at the list, I believe both players are playing four bolts. And uh, both players are playing three Psionic Blasts, so not four. And then there's the first little difference here. We see Clovis is playing with three Chain Lightnings. And uh, Hank is only playing with four Chain Lightnings. Or is playing with a full playset, I should say. So he's playing with one extra. Another interesting um, difference between the decks is the counterpart of the deck. So this is the burn part that we've got the counterpart. Uh, for Hank, we see two counter spells and a mana drain. For Clovis, we see four counter spells and a mana drain. So he's a little bit more counter heavy. And talking about counter magic, after sideboarding, we have a very interesting uh, situation because both players having access to blue and red play with red elemental blast and blue elemental blast in their sideboards. So we could be up for uh, a, a blast battle and maybe it's just going to be like a roll of the dice. Whoever has more blasts wins this crucial counter war and wins the game. I wouldn't be surprised to see that happening uh, after sideboarding. Now, uh, what I find more interesting here talking about the differences between the lists is uh, the differences in creature base because we see a full playset of Surrender Befreeds and a full playset of Iron Claw Orcs and of course the four Mishra's Factories on the side of Hank. Then when we compare that with the list of Clovis, we see some differences, right? We see four Flying Men, we see three Surrender Befreeds, we see two Suchis and of course also that playset of Mishra's Factories. But interestingly enough here, Clovis has gone for Flying Men over Iron Claw Orc. Of course the plus of Flying Men is you can drop it turn one, Flying is great evasion in old school, right? So that's the pluses. And the negative is it only has one power, whereas the Iron Claw Orc is a little bit more tough. It's got a little bit more meat on the bones. It's got two power, so it strikes twice as hard. So I'm going to be really uh, looking at that difference, like what creature is actually better for this deck? I mean, one of the reasons to play with Iron Claw Orc over Flying Man is uh, the fact that uh, Iron Claw Orc doesn't get hit by a city in a bottle. But in this matchup, that's not relevant because both players don't play with City in a bottle for obvious reasons, right? But that could be, if you're looking at a whole tournament, that could be a reason to do so. Um, of course, Flying Man, like I said, it's a one drop. So you can tap your blue, drop it next turn, tap your second blue. You've got Counter Magic open and you've got a creature to put some threat on the board. So you would probably just pass turn with a Counter Spell in hand. That's a line of play that you cannot make. Uh, with the Iron Claw, obviously, being two and also having red in the casting cost. Of course, you could then cast that with um, with a Volcanic Island, for example, or a City of Brass. So it doesn't have to be a problem, but the two mana definitely makes a big difference. Um, but that's actually the, the biggest difference, right? Both players are, are playing that Black Splash, Demonic Tutor, Mind Twist. Both players are playing a one-off Fireball. I guess another big difference here is that we see that Hank is playing two Shatter's Main. Those are going to be quite good against the Suchis, I feel. Um, and Hank is playing two Blood Moons main. That could be useful as well. Whereas Clovis is only playing Blood Moon in the sideboard. So that's another difference. So there are just these, these little differences. And I'm just 
picking those out just to kind of discuss. Um, what I would like you to do before we start with the big finals, it would be great if you want to do it for me to write down, let me know in the comments below, which build is your favorite, right? Is it Hanks or is it Clovis's? They're both very strong, of course. Which build is your favorite and why is it your favorite? And looking at it maybe from the perspective of if you would go into a full tournament and maybe your second perspective would be which one is your favorite in this specific matchup? Which one do you think you know, has the upper hand here and why do you think so? Because I'm, I'm really torn. My instinct says Flying Man is better than Iron Claw Orcs. You know, that's one thing. But Iron Claw Orcs, in, and then I'm talking about this matchup, but Iron Claw Orcs has been doing so well for Hank, not just in this tournament, but also in other tournaments, that I'm starting to doubt that. You know, I'm starting to doubt my opinion on, on that. Um, another thing that I think is that, yes, Counter Magic is very good. You know, but I think in, in a sprint like this with the, these two sprint decks, I would rather have like more burn and cards that hurt my opponent than counter magic in this specific matchup. So there I would give Hank a slight like plus, but overall, I I have no clue. For me, this is really 50-50 and that's why I'm so looking forward to discussing this finals with you. Okay, so these are the decks. Again, please let me know in the comments below which one is your favorite and why. Um, and now that we've discussed all the ins and outs, it only means one thing, and that is that we are ready to go to the finals of the Edgeman Championships. Let's go! Game number one of the finals is here on the right. We have Clovis playing Counterburn. He's on the play. And on the left, Hank also playing Counterburn. Slight differences between the decks. Here we see Clovis starting with a Mox Sapphire and a City of Brass, by the way. So small differences between uh, both of the decks. Clovis, for example, is playing with a full play set of counter spells and Flying Man, where Hank is only playing with uh, two counter spells main and a Mana Drain, and he's playing with Iron Claw Orc over Flying Man. He's got a very uh, good start here, it seems. Look at that turn one. Surrender Perfrit, you're hitting the board. Are we going to see a counter spell by Clovis? He's got the mana for it, but it's not there. So this is a very strong start, I guess, uh, here by Hank. Also because the Surrender, of course, has that toughness of four. Perhaps we're going to see a Psionic Blast here, though. But uh, you cannot bolt or chain it unless you've got two. Here we see a Mox Jet. Tapping the Jet. There's a Vice. Don't think the Vice is going to do much exactly four in hand. So no damage there for Hank from the Vice. He is going to drop to 19 from his own Surrender. Take a card for turn so that Dice is there to remember, remind Hank of the damage from the Surrendip. Here we see a City of Brass from his side. There's the attack. Life can be so simple. Clovis here dropping to 17. Looks like he wants to tap the Sapphire here. If he does so, he no longer has two blue open to potentially counter threats away. Gonna tap two, take a damage. Are we gonna see a time walk perhaps? Oh, an Iron Claw Orc. And what's the follow up play? Another Iron Claw Orc. So two Iron Claw Orcs here. Lots of glare on his side of the board, but I can tell you there are two Iron Claw Orcs, two, two creatures for one red and one, kind of the red gri grizzly bear, you could say. There's a tap, there's a bolt. Of course, he has to tap the City of Brass. Should take a damage for that. So this is an odd moment here. Clovis should have taken the damage, gone to 16. So a little mistake here by the place. Or is that, wait a minute, that is a Blood Moon, of course. My bad, it's not Iron Claw Orcs, it's a Blood Moon hitting the board. That's of course why he's tapping the Mishra's Factory for a Mountain. So no longer has access to blue. Here we see a Fireball of one and a probably, yeah, exactly, a Chain Lightning. Killing the Surrendip. And there's a Flying Man. Hand is now empty of Clovis. So the situation here as follows is that both players have access to one blue because of their Mox Sapphires. There is a Mox Ruby. There's a City of Brass. That's just a mountain for now. Tapping two mountains. Yeah, there's the Shatter. This makes sense. Shatter on the Sapphire. I mean, taking away blue here is huge. And this Blood Moon is, is doing a lot of damage. I guess for Clovis, the good uh, thing here is that he, of course, has a creature on board. There's a library, which is just a mountain. I think both players are top decking at the moment. This is quite an exciting first game. 
There we see the Iron Claw Orcs. There's the untap. Probably going to see another attack exactly. So Hank dropping to 16. But now we can see the difference between Iron Claw Orc and the Flying Man. The Iron Claw, of course, having two power instead of one. So Clovis here dropping to 15. There we see a bolt on the Flying Man and a pass. The chances, of course, are pretty big that Clovis here will also find a bolt or a chain to kill the Iron Claw. There's the attack, but for now it's working. That Iron Claw is really doing work here for Hank. Clovis on 13. There's the pass. Three cards in hand. Perhaps they're all blue, of course. No access to blue mana because that Sapphire was destroyed. Look at this. Clovis on 11. Needs to find something. Has to stop the bleeding. Tapping black. Does he have a demonic tutor, perhaps? That would be helpful. And then I wonder what he's going to look up with that Demonic Tutor. I mean, the Sapphire is in the graveyard, so cannot go for that play. Perhaps he's just going to go for a basic island. It could be a choice. But a very, very interesting first game here. And I think that Shatter on the Sapphire was a very crucial moment in the game. Black Lotus could be an option as well here, of course, for Clovis. I think those three cards in hand are blue cards. Because if he would find anything red, he would have played it out already. Probably would have played a chain or a bolt on the Iron Claw. So that one card there is going to hand. I really wonder what it is. And Clovis here cutting the deck. Of course, they're taking their time. This is the finals of the Edge Man. So both of these decks have been doing very, very well at the event. There's a pass turn. I really wonder what he looked up. There's the attack. Glove is dropping to nine. Wheel of Fortune could be a card as well that maybe he looked up that will give him access to seven new cards. I'm just really, really curious to see what card Clovis uh, chose with that Demonic Tutor. Still Hank's turn, though. After the attack, second main, two cards in hand for him. He's going to play a Chain Lightning here. And he can actually send it back, but then Hank can send it back for another three. So Clovis could send this back to kill the Orc. And of course he's in the tank, because if he does... Hank can send it back. He takes another three. So it's understandable that he doesn't do it in this scenario. He's on six. And I guess we're now going to see what card he looked up with the Demonic Tutor. Yep, it's a Wheel of Fortune. And is that maybe another Bolt in hand or Psionic Blast? It's another chain. So the chain is gone. And look at that losing Counterspell, Psionic Blast, Psionic Blast. So really only blue cards in hand for him. And this is, of course, desperation mode for Clovis because he knows I'm on six. Probably going to die because Hank is going to draw lots of burn. But I have to do something or else I'm going to die anyway. So it's better to go for this plan B, playing the wheel, hoping for a really good seven. There's a Mox Ruby, not what you want to see. There's a Volcanic. Again, it's just more red mana. There's the pass. I mean, he's probably... Yeah, there's the vice, of course. He's going to take three from the vice, I guess. He's going to drop to 13. But I'm expecting Henker to finish the job in game one. There's a basic island attacking for two. Glove is dropping here to four. What are we going to see? Psionic Blast, perhaps? I mean, Clovis doesn't even have access to blue to counter anything away. So it's really like free access. You don't have to worry about that. But it looks like he's going to do something else. Perhaps a Fireball. Really taking his time here, of course. Doesn't want to make a mistake. Brain Geyser. Wow, I guess he didn't find enough burn. He's going to play a Brain Geyser 4-5, I believe. So because of the basic island, he had double blue. There's a bolt, going to go to one. Is there another bolt? 
there's another bull. That's it. So winning a game number one here for Hank. But I think we're going to see a completely different game after sideboarding because then both players are going to board in their blue elemental blast and their red elemental blast. So that's going to be exciting stuff. Anyway, uh, we'll give these players some time to sideboard and we will catch back up with them in game number two. Game number two, here we go. So again, Clovis on the play after losing that first game. Needs to win this one to stay in it. Let's see. There we go. There's an island. There's a Sapphire again passing the turn. So again, he's got counter magic up. But we didn't see a single counter spell though in that uh, first game. And this basic island is also going to be good against the Blood Moons. Look at that missing a land drop for Clovis. That is a bit painful. Second blue for Hank. Clovis again passing the turn. Ooh, this is not good. Come on, find a land. Hopefully we're in for an exciting finals here. Ooh, discarding a Mind Twist passing the turn. That is painful here. I'm hoping that Clovis can uh, find a land from the top next turn. Let's first see. Uh, what Hank can do here, attacking for two with the Mishra's Factory. Clov is dropping to 18. Okay, there's at least a land. It's an island, though, not a red source. Passing the turn, so uh, very unlucky here in game one. He couldn't find any basics, and uh, and therefore he couldn't play out his black spells, or sorry, his blue spells. And now in, in game number two, Clov can only find basic islands. There's again the attack for two. There's a Psionic Blast taking care of the Mishra's Factory, unless we're going to see a counter spell, of course. Or a red elemental blast, because this is after sideboarding. Looks like he is gonna counter here. Yep, there's a counter spell. He's gonna take a damage from his City of Brass. That means Clovis is gonna drop to 16. Gonna draw for turn. Can he find, for example, a mountain? Can he find perhaps a surrender perfreet? Tapping three. There's a surrender perfreet. Three, four flying powerhouse from Arabian Nights. That's a great blocker, of course, for the Mishra's Factory. And I wonder if Hank can, uh, can well, maybe he can find this Surrender as well. Nope, it's a Psionic Blast. Gonna drop to 16, taking care of the Surrender. Two blue tapped. What are we gonna see for two blue? Time Walk, okay, just kind of cycling the Time Walk away here. You don't want to do that, but then again, it could be worse. You know, if you find a time walk from the top of your deck, you're like, okay, I'll just time walk and hopefully I can find something useful. Okay, talking about useful, Black Lotus. So this could be a big play here. Cracking the Lotus, it seems. Ooh, yep, there's a time twister. Yeah, you really understand this play. I think if you're clubs, you, you just want to find some red mana. You know, get your deck working. We don't see counter magic here from Hank. That means we're going to shuffle and shuffle and draw seven new ones. It's quite, it's one of the things I like about Counter Burn is the draw sevens in the deck, you know, Wheel of Fortune and um, Time Twister. The problem, of course, is when you're playing against Counter Burn, it's usually the end of the line because they play these cards when they've almost burned you out and are looking for that extra, you know, Bolt or Psionic Blast to kill you. Um, but yeah, in this case, it's fun. Both players are going to draw a fresh seven. And remember, Clovis hasn't played a land yet, so if he can finally found, find... That red source, he can instantly play it out. You know, if it's a volcanic or something, he can play that out. So let's see what both players are going to find. Seven new cards here for Clovis and seven new ones for Hank on the left. And there we go. Let's see. Oh, another island. Are you kidding me? <laughs> Did he take out all his mountains? Oh, man, that's so unfortunate. Okay, it is a time walk. That is very fortunate. So it looks like he's going to take a turn unless we're going to see counter magic coming from Hank here. I mean, if you've got a counter spell, you want to counter, right? Because he's got a handful of stuff. Ooh, he's allowing it. Yeah, maybe choosing to counter something else or perhaps he doesn't have a counter spell. We'll just have to wait and see. So Glove is here taking his extra turn. Is that finally a red source in that hand? Okay, it's a Lotus. <laughs> That's something. Finding a Time Walk and a Lotus. Cracking the Lotus here. There's a Surrender Pafrit. Hitting the board. 
Does that mean that perhaps he wants to keep two counter spells open for next turn? I mean, I would understand that, you know, because you want to make sure that you, um, you know, that you know that Hank's going to untap with a, a full hand of cards, so it's good to have extra counter spells at uh, at the ready. Here we see a volcanic island. There's a tab. There's a soul ring. Hard to see, but we can just spot it over there. I'm not quite sure. That's a mana he's tapping. Tapping three in total and the soul ring, it seems. Mind twist. Oh, ho, ho, that's a killer. I'm really expecting a counter spell here. Mind twist for four. Keep, keeping, of course, counter magic open on the side of Hank. So I'm going to... I'm expecting counter war. There's a mana drain. There's a counter spell. Are we going to see a second counter spell here? Tapping two blue. He needs to have it here. If he doesn't, it's probably almost game for Hank. Oh, it's a boomerang. Ay, 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 ay. It's a boomerang. Sending back a land. Oh, oh, losing. Did you see that there? Losing a brain geyser. That was huge. That brain geyser was huge. That really hurts. Of course, the surrender was also good, but that brain geyser really hurts. And he bounced a land, but I was really thinking that would be a second counter spell there for Clovis, but it wasn't playing with, uh, with a boomerang, I believe, in the sideboard, so he boarded that in. There's the attack for three. So Hank on 11, Clovis on 15. But this mind twist was so painful that Brain Geyser was exactly what Clovis needed. And now it's in the graveyard. There we see a Psionic Blast here on the Serendip. Counterspell though, so found a Counterspell from the top. That is good news for Clovis and an understandable counter because kind of all your eggs are in one basket, right? You've got this Surrender plan, that's that's all you got. <laughs> that's, that's what you got to go with. Hank having three cards in hand, you only having one card in hand. There's the attack, Hank dropping to eight. Can he make it here? Are we going to go to a game three? Or is Hank uh, going to win here and win the tournament? That's the big question. Unfortunately, a lot of glare on his side of the board. Not sure what that land is there under the factory. Animating the factory. Okay, it's another factory. Hitting here for three. So Clove is dropping to 11. Taking his turn, taking a damage, going to 10. If he attacks, he's going to put him on five. Okay, there's a, a red source. Could be useful. There's the attack. I really wonder what that one card is in hand for Clovis. Could just be a land, of course. I hope not. I really want to see a game three. These these matches are these games are very thrilling. These mirror matches are just uh, just exciting to watch. There's another volcanic island. Four cards in hand for Hank. He could just hit for four by animating his factories. That's exactly what he does. Clove is dropping to six. Oh, he's gonna go to five. Are we gonna see a surrender? Okay, so not a psionic blast, but a surrender. A big problem though. There's a tap. Ooh, there's a red elemental blast. Trying to counter. Are we gonna see a counter spell on this one? Oh, we're gonna see a counter spell on the red elemental blast. That is very unfortunate. So Clovis now needs something good from the top. Can he find a psionic blast? That could give him the win. Is it a psionic blast? Or are we gonna have a one one? What is it gonna be? Come on, Clovis. I would love to see a game three here. I'm just gonna say it again. Maybe it influences the outcome. I would love to see a game three. That one card in hand, keeping it in hand. Oh man, this is exciting. So Clove is really in the tank. What if, what if it's a chain lightning, right? If it's a chain lightning, you can attack and then if he blocks with the surrender, you can play your chain second main, kill it, but is that really going to help you? You know, you're still going to die the next turn two to two factories because then when it's your turn, you're going to take a damage from your own surrender and die. You should be on one. I really wonder what that card in hand is. If it is a chain, I can understand Clovis here thinking and thinking and thinking and thinking. Oh, it's a red elemental blast. It works. Blasting it way through. 
or not? Are we going to see a blue elemental blast? Nope, we're not. Okay, so red elemental blast works. The problem here for Clovis is, though, he cannot attack. If he attacks, he's going to die next turn. Exactly, needs a blocker. I mean, he's still in a very bad position. But hey, if you're in it, you can still win it. You can make it a 1-1. You can do it, Clovis. Mon ami, you can make it work. Hank finding a basic island. Two cards in hand. Could consider attacking both. Separately, he could deal two more damage, put Clovis on three, which could be useful too if he has a chain or bolt in hand. If he doesn't attack, he's kind of signaling that he doesn't have those cards. But then again, if your Clovis, you know, you're going to take one point of damage regardless from the surrender, you'll be on four, which is not great as well. So I think if you're Hank and if you don't have burn in hand, I would just pass the turn because he's slowly going to die to the surrender anyway and he cannot attack you. Then again, I mean, I'm saying this, but if Clovis draws a chain or a bolt or a Sayani blast from the top, oh man, this game too, I love it. So of course, Hank is taking his time here. This is the finals. But I mean, what if you've got no burn in hand, what can you do? You could consider attacking with both, right? You lose the factory, put Clovis on three, and then you got to hope for the best. Exactly, I would just pass here. But there are a lot of outs here for Clovis. What is that one card? What is it going to be? Is it going to be the victory for Clovis? Passing the turn. Another card here for Hank. Volcanic Island. Passing the turn. Going to go to three. Oh, he's got another out. What is it going to be? Needs to do something here. If he doesn't do anything, the next turn... Ooh, I think Hank's got this one. He's probably now going to animate. What does he have in hand there? Tapping a blue. There's a red elemental blast. He's got to tap... Uh, that's it. Two City of Brasses. He was tapping the wrong mana, but it wasn't relevant. Oh, man. Hank, congratulations, my friend. And I hope you understand that I was rooting for Clovis because I just really wanted to see that game three. But this is tournament magic for you. Winner! of the Atman Championships is Hank, also known as HWMTG, I believe underscore MTG. That's his uh, Instagram handle if you want to follow him there. I believe it's, it's your Instagram, right, Hank? Anyway, you're the winner. Here is his list. Congratulations on winning the first ever Atman Championship. Okay, okay, that's enough applauding, but yeah, very, very, very good victory here by Hank. Congratulations, and before I sign off, I would also like to thank Emil for hosting this tournament. It's always great to see people organizing more old school events, and don't underestimate the time and energy and effort it takes to organize these things. It's all done out of love for the game, so thank you, Emil, for doing that. You can give Emil a follow if you want on Instagram, Adventure104. I will have this insta popping up for you to follow um and yeah thank you like i said so much for organizing this event and i believe you already talked to me about the second edition of the edge man so that will be happening uh, later this year i guess so that's going to be really really cool now i would also like to thank you for watching another video right here on timmy talks and for following this video series all the way to the finals if you want to see more old school magic take a look on the channel i've got so many videos so if you want to see more check it out talking about want to see more before you go please subscribe to the channel hit that subscribe button and ring that bell and if you're already a subscriber, thank you so much. Please leave a like, share this on your socials, and leave a comment. All these things are free and really help the channel move forward. And talking about moving forward, there's one last thing you can do, and that is uh, become a patron of the show. Hank and Emil actually are already patrons of the show. Thank you so much. They were one of the first patrons of the channel, actually, so that's always been great. I really appreciate your support. But you can also become a supporter of the show. How does it work? It's very simple. You go to patreon.com slash Talks check out my page and then you can sign up for a patron for just one dollar a month so just for one dollar you're already supporting me a bunch you know you're helping me to keep the lights on to keep making these videos for you so please consider becoming a patron check out patreon.com slash timmy talks and one of the nice perks is your name will be mentioned at the end of every single video in the end scroll what end scroll this end scroll
Ik het als ik het als zomba kan zien.